Again, talking to Mark Lamont Hill, author of We Still Here, which is out tomorrow. I got to ask you this with all love. Why did you sit down for an interview with Candace Owens? <laughs> she, that's an interesting question. Because <laughs> she's so, man, the comments about George Floyd, like she's so insidious to me. Why did you sit, what, what made you want to sit down with her? You know, she, she, Part, part of it was being as a writer, I've been out the mix a little bit. So I, I, I hadn't seen all of the kind of engagements people had, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, I, I didn't know the answer. So I, I didn't know I didn't know just how out of whack some of this stuff was. Um, she made it. She made an invite. She, she sent me a note. We, we work for the uh, same uh, media company, uh, Quake Media. We, I have a podcast, a weekly podcast called uh, uh, What Do You Really Think with Buck Sexton, uh, which 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 airs every uh, comes out every Tuesday on, on QuakeMedia.com. And, and, and so part of it was a, a, a company uh, sort of commitment. But the other thing was, I, I enjoy the dialogue. You know, I enjoy having, I, I, I worked at Fox News for years. And my, um, people always said like, why do you debate Bill O'Reilly? And it's like, well, I, I never debated Bill O'Reilly with the assumption that he'd say, you know what, Mark, you got a point. Let's just go to break, right? The assumption was that the people watching the debate would be able to make a different decision, that they would, would make an analysis. Um, of, of, of what's going on. And I made that decision to stay there for a while. Um, I wouldn't do that now um, because I think they've gone even further off the rails and they're no longer even, even a legitimate news organization, but we're talking over a decade ago, um, uh, 15 years, Jesus. Um, but um, the idea was that I could engage her and have a conversation and sort of model what civil dialogue could look like, but also model certain types of responses to straw man arguments around black death, around black on black crime, around George Floyd in particular, around affirmative action. And a lot of the responses that I got were like, yo, you real patient, bro. Like you're the most patient dude I ever seen. Yo, bro, I, I don't know how you stayed in that seat. And for me, I was trying to model a certain way of engaging in critical dialogue with people with whom you have staunch disagreements, stark disagreements. Now, I think there's an argument to be made that you don't want to give, you don't want to platform people or, gi or give a platform or legitimize people. Um, I think there's a difference between me going on her platform and her coming on mine, right? Like, she ain't never been on BET, right, where I work, BET News. She ain't never been on, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, this, but me going into a space that's really a, a den of wolves and, and saying, hey, let me have this dialogue and let and, and engage, I think had some value. Um, and I can't say that I wouldn't do it again, you know, um, because I think, again, I think there's some value. Now, when you see on a BET special, then, then, then you should call me and be like, yo, bro, you tripping, like, you, you what's going on? But I, I think in a space where she's got she's got 10 times as many followers. As I do. So it's not like I'm bringing people to the party, right? I, I'm going into her space and having this conversation. Um, and I think sometimes it's necessary. And I, I do think it's interesting that when I debated Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, um, um, Glenn, Glenn, um, uh, Glenn Beck, uh, Greg Gutfeld, uh, and not to mention all the black male conservatives, no one ever said, why are you talking to them? It's, and I'm not saying this about you, but it's only Candace Owens that people have said, why are you talking to her? And, and I think that that's a particular thing that's, that, that's both race and gender. Um, and I, I know, and again, I'm not saying that about you because you'd be like, don't talk to none of them fools, right? You, you, you're an equal opportunity person in terms of saying I'm not legitimizing them. But, but a lot of the particular types of hate I see, I mean, because quite frankly, there are men who I, I call them, I don't call them hoteps because I, I think that's disrespectful to the tradition, the comedic tradition, but the people we call hoteps, right, who are more misogynistic, who are just as anti-Black, just as nativistic. Just, I mean, they're, they're foul enough that people would say, you know, that, that one could legitimately say, don't argue with them either. But again, I engage those people because I'm trying to have a certain kind of conversation and try and get a certain kind of outcome. Um, and, and so that's my goal, you know, and I don't do it perfectly. I, you know, I, 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 I can, I'm open to critique on that and I, I need to spend time, more time really reflecting on some of those choices, not to say that I've done something wrong, but just to say, I'm, I'm, I wanna hear and sit with those critiques more. But my, my gut reaction is, I think it's okay to engage these people under certain circumstances on certain terms, um, if it yields a certain outcome for, for the people watching. Because I'll tell you of any video I've done, honestly, um, that's the only YouTube video I have that people stop me on the street and say, yo, I saw that Candace Owens, yo, yo like you killed it. Yo, thank you, now I know how to break down this. Now I know how to respond when somebody says that. And for me, there's value in that as, as someone who, who tries to engage ideas in the public sphere. Have you have you at all been uh, disturbed or just like kind of taken aback by these these flock of black Trump supporters? You know, they're unlike uh, black Bush supporters, the, the uh, Diamond and Silks, the uh, Candace Owens, uh, a bunch of other folks I could name. Uh, just uh, what is it? Uh, 
um, Pastor Mark Burns, uh, Pastor Daryl Scott. Like these are folks. Oh, I'm just God. no, no, literally no political experience. The receipts show they they weren't even you know conservatives before that. But what do you think this is? These folks who see an opportunity in media and say, like, literally, Mark, if you said you were a Trump supporter. You'd have a primetime show on Fox News like within within thirty I'd days. I'd be rich. I'd be stupid rich. <laughs> That's I'd what be... I'm saying. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Like, it's all you got to do. I mean, the truth is, a lot of the and I said this uh, at, my, at my last employer. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of mediocre Negroes who are getting in the Trump line because the line is shorter, right? Um, does anybody it, it, does anybody need liberal Stacey Dash's analysis of the elections? No, because there's a million people who have experience, expertise, insight, um, degrees, um, who can offer that insight, right? Um, do I really need Pastor Daryl Scott's analysis, right, of anything, right, of, of anything on the left? No. But if you take that same preacher, right, who has a, who, who, who otherwise was destined for anonymity, and, and, and you put him on the right, and you give him a, a fake doctoral degree, and you get him to parrot and ventriloquate, you know, white supremacist rants about black folk. Um, now he's front in line. Now he's on all the cable news outlets. You know, so the Daryl Scotts of the world, Mark Burns, the, the guy who, who was, who was the, he's, the, I knew him as a fake Kappa, but, you know, he, he pretended to have a degree, pretended to be a Kappa, pretended to be politically informed. Now he's in the front of the line. Now he's speaking at conventions, right? Sheriff Daryl Clark, right? You know, again, you know, as Zora said, slave ships and shoes, right? People who walk around sort of maneuvering through the world in ways that, that replicate and parrot white supremacy. They're, they're coming through the world doing this because they're willing to do white folks work, right? And, 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 and the line is just shorter for people who are willing to do white folks work. And that's what those people are. I don't have an issue. I have disagreements with black Republicans. I have disagreements with black conservatives, right? But there's a difference between being a black conservative, right? And, and being willing to, um, to, to sell your integrity, right? Your character and your people out for a mess of pottage. And, and, and that's what's happening um, with, the, with many of these black conservatives. Again, not all of them. Some of them, I just, some, some of them I just think they're wrong, right? And they think I'm wrong. But, but these other people who, who always got something to say about black folk and how pathological we are because, because it, it, it makes a headline, that's who I have um, an issue with. And I think that there's some of that um, even among the, 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 the black men who support Trump, who don't identify as conservative, who just want to think outside the box. Who just want to be independent, or contrarian, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know that that whole line, the, the the Democratic plantation. I'm like, why are you even using slave references for somebody who who disagrees with you? Their argument is like, oh, I could think independently, but if any black folks think you know think differently, you're on the uh, Democratic plantation.